This video will discuss Chrome Guided Smile in a double edentulous situation. The image here is a before and a simulation in the middle and then the after. And we'll go through the steps of how to complete one of these cases. With all edentulous cases, there is a dual scan performed. So the denture you see here had radiopaque markers placed on it and there were three scans captured. One with both dentures seated in the mouth in occlusion, never separated. That's one CT. The second CT is of the maxillary denture sitting on a foam pad or on the scan table. You never want it sitting on plastic or metal. You always want it, well, it'll never be metal, but you never want it sitting uh, directly on a plastic chin rest. You want it raised above so that it's suspended in air. And then you'll scan the lower denture by itself. Those are the three scans to send in. And in fact, those are the only physical records that we need in a double edentulous. There are no impressions. We always want to have photographs. This is a full smile. We like to have them retracted, but this will work. We just want to see how the teeth come together so that we can confirm that the CT was taken properly and that the dentures that we print are articulated properly. So left, right, and center pictures, uh, full face, full smile. And then it's nice if, uh, especially with denture patients, but with, with all patients to have profile images too. So we can have a discussion about lip support and tooth position. The case is then brought into our software uh, with double edentulous, uh, the process can be very quick uh, because uh, the teeth are already set up uh, because we can simply copy the patient's existing uh, denture workup. Now, if the patient needs a different plane of occlusion, different tooth size, the patient needs to be opened a little bit, we had that discussion early on uh, based on the work authorization uh, requests, and we can complete a full setup we can open the patient, we can change the teeth, we can do lots of things in tooth setup software. So we would go through that phase as well if it was needed and then we would plan the case and meet you online. Uh, this case here, you can see we've already uh, taken the dual CT scan, brought it into the software, planned the implants, and when we meet you online, uh, the case is uh, fully pre-planned. It should be just about ready to just tweak a little bit and then uh, move on to production. So here we go. We always do these, work these up in separate versions of the software uh, simply because uh, at, at some point the STL files loaded in this software could make it a um, little unstable, could make a crash. So we always work them up in separate, uh, separate softwares. Uh, that is to say, in separate software files. Once the online meeting is complete, then we push play and the green light goes and we take 10 days to fabricate uh, the guided smile day of surgery components. As you can see here, this is uh, double edentulous pin guide, pin guides, right? one for the upper, one for the lower. And then this is, uh, these are the, the prosthetics. This is a fixation base. They're set on the carrier guides. And then this, uh, this is the backup, uh, the, uh, the rapid appliances that are used to transfer the files uh, to the final. All right, backup denture. And then uh, the osteotomy guides. So this is all sent to surgery. And let's go through the process uh, during surgery. As with all chrome guided smile cases, we provide the surgery mat here. And this is uh, for BioHorizon. Uh, this is a QR code uh, for information about the surgery mat and what it's used for. And this is for the BioHorizon guided kit. And what this is, is a 12 inch tall by 25, sometimes longer inch wide print of the, uh, of the, the information about the surgery. So as you can see, this has all the implants with their cross sections, both in a 360 turn and a, just a regular cross section. It has the indications for which tool to use from the guided kit. It has images of how the uh, fixation base should look in the mouth, the trajectories of the multi-unit abutments and implants, and then an image of the osteotomy guide for a visual reference during surgery. And then more information here about the guided kit. 
and the sequencing. So this part on the top, uh, on the left, is what goes on the cabinet. It's taped to the cabinet uh, where it can be easily seen, viewed during surgery. And then the surgery mat part of it goes on the counter. And this is where the doctor and the team will place all their temporary cylinders, the multi-unit abutments, and then all of their implants to have it well organized uh, prior to surgery. And it's a wonderful tool to assist the doctor through the surgical procedure. With most chrome surgeries, the pin guides are seated individually. In other words, if you're working on the maxillary arch, you seat the pin guide on the maxillary edentulous arch or the dentate arch, and you perform that arch. But on double edentulous, the process is a little bit different. Because we build the pin guides in occlusion, we build the upper and the lower to fit together, then you seat both initially. And what the doctor can do is seat the um, the, the patient's existing dentures and then use the marks on the nose and the chin and then place the pin guides and ensure that, uh, that, the, that the lines are exactly the same. Now in this case, I'm saying these a little bit backwards, on the right, these are the patient's existing dentures and the left is, uh, is with both pin guides seated. Now this discovery here, you notice that the patient is a little bit more open with the pin guides in and that was because they were not seated completely and they were a little bit out of occlusion and so when they were adjusted not not adjusted with a burr but when they were um, seated properly together and in and in the mouth then then these two lines matched and that is obviously very important for going through the process of the surgery that the pin guides are seated exactly as the dentures seat because effectually the pin guides are duplicates of the denture. They fit the same way, the teeth are in the same position and everything. The prosthetics are not based on this anatomy, uh, but the pin guides are so that we can duplicate the bite exactly when you start the case. So as you can see here, the patient has their existing lower denture against the upper pin guide, and you can do this vice versa. And everything should seat uh, passively and the lines will be the same. So with uh, edentulous, the, the doctor first tries in the pin guides, make sure that, that, that they fit and everything is, uh, everything is seated perfectly. And then the next step is to make a crestal incision uh, along the, well, it depends on which arch you're going to start. Now, most of these cases, the doctor starts on the upper arch. So in this situation, in the upper, you'll make a crestal incision and then you'll lay a flap labially until it is above the pin guide and above the fixation base. So we don't have a complete set of photos on this case, but you can imagine that this would all be exposed, the labial bone would all be exposed, but you want to leave the tissue on the crest and on the lingual to support the pin guide during pinning. So in this situation, the doctor, which is very common, uh, relieved the maxillary tissue and left the mandibular. Put the patient in both pin guides with the fixation bases and drilled the fixation sites on both upper and lower. Now why do this? Because at this point right here, when you have both pin guides in the mouth, this is the only time during the surgery where both pin guides can be placed, can be seated. After this, you would have to um, you'd have to go through a couple little hoops, little tricks to put both of the pin guides back in the mouth in order to uh, pin the lower. Otherwise, you're just going to have to pin the lower without the upper, and that's not what you want. So set um, all the pins in, and then once they're set, once everything is uh, um, um, in occlusion, all the pins are in, then you can remove the lower pins, which these are going right through the tissue because it's not been reflected on the lower. And you can remove these pins, remove the pin guide, and then remove the upper pin guide. And then what you'll have remaining is this, a flapped maxillary arch that is ready for chrome. So at this point, the doctor is going to reduce the bone down to the level of the fixation base, just like with all chrome surgeries, go through the process of placing the implant, uh, drilling the sites, placing the implants, going through that entire procedure, 
and then placing the uh, the carrier guide, putting in the multi-unit abutments and temporary cylinders, and then converting the prosthetic. All right, so at this point, the maxillary arch is finished, and you'll notice this is where uh, could get into a little trouble if you didn't already pin the lower. As you can see, the occlusion is not going to be the same because the setup that we did, the doctor wanted a little bit uh, different setup in the prosthetics than were existing in the denture. So their occlusion is not going to be the same and the pinning will not be accurate. So this was more of a demonstration purposes. Uh, thank you very much to the doctor and Thomas who, who was chairside for the surgery sent us these nice photos. This is what you want at the very beginning so that you don't have to deal with this. So at this point, um, the, sometimes the doctors will remove the maxillary uh, prosthetic so to make space to work on the lower. And since the lower was already pinned, the doctor simply laid a flap, found the four holes on the lower, put the fixation base in, and performed chrome on the lower arch, went through the same processes as the upper, and then at the end, voila, nice result. As you can see here, this the patient, um, you know, it's a double edentulous case. So sometimes, you know, the bite's a little, a little funny, especially coming out of surgery. But the top left, this is pre-surgery, the patient's dentures, and this is the surgical, uh, the surgical final. Really a nice result. The patient was just ecstatic. He wanted to take some pictures with the group and take some after shots. Uh, this is Dr. Reeder and team, and this is Thomas Kuhn, our chairside specialist. Um, so thank you very much, and please post any questions or contact us uh, with any questions about a double edentulous procedure. Thank you very much.